All right, so I'm gonna try and make this video as short as possible, which for me is going to be hard, but we are gonna to learn today what a Renix engine monitor is. So this is a device that I sell. It is a homemade 3D printed scan tool that I've completely built myself, and it reads your Renix vehicle. So let's get started. First off, what is Renix? Renix is 1987 to 1990 Jeeps. How do you tell if you got a Renix? Let's take a look. Okay, so pop the hood, come to the passenger side. If you have these yellow caps, or sometimes they're black, and you get an adapter like that, you have a Renix, all right? You need this diagnostic port. If you don't have this port, this will not work, so you can stop watching now. 1991 to 1995 is Chrysler OBD-1, and 96 and newer is Chrysler OBD-2. This will not work on either of those. Only Renix guys, all right? If you got this port, then you get yourself an adapter, which I also sell, plug it in, and we've got data. So this will read your engine and your transmission computer. So anything that goes into that computer, you can read. This does not have codes. There are no trouble codes. There's no check engine light, none of that. So over here, up in your dash, none of these are check engine lights. You do not, do not have a check engine light on a Renix, okay? Just wanna make that clear. Now, for you people that have uh, MT2500 snap-on red bricks, this guy does everything that that does. And it's a whole lot smaller. So small. You could put it on your dash. All right, so on to the big question. What does this magical box do? Well, quite a lot. Quite a lot. This is every single reading that this thing can do. So you get a big old manual that tells you how to use the thing. So let's turn it on and get started. First off, make sure your Renix adapter is plugged in. Run your Ethernet cable to somewhere inside the vehicle or outside the vehicle if you just want to use it as a regular scan tool. Turn on the ignition. Okay, so here is Renix Engine Monitor Plus version 3. So this has got a clock in it. So, what does this thing do? Well, let's go to gauges and find out. You get a live reading of all your sensors. Everything. You get your throttle position sensor, water temperature, all that. So, I'm going to start the car, and we're going to go through each one real quick. This will work with automatic and manual vehicles, okay? So, either one. When you set it to automatic, you can even read the transmission. Okay, so first off, we can read our map sensor. So this is calculated into pressure, and you can choose what pressure you want. So you can have PSI, you can have inches of mercury, you can have kilopascals, whatever you like. So this is the raw absolute reading. Then we have calculated engine vacuum. So this is how much vacuum is being placed on the engine, which is negative, which is also on the map sensor. Next, we have our water temperature. We have our coolant temp sensor in the engine block which is going to be different from the gauge. The gauge runs off uh, a sensor from the head. We have our intake air temperature in the intake manifold. We have the engine RPM. So if I rev it, the RPM goes up. That would be cool for you guys that have uh, dummy gauges and no RPM gauge. Next we have battery voltage. So that reads what the ECU is getting. Alright, next everyone's favorite, the oxygen sensor. This actually shows you the uh, swing between rich and lean from 0 to 5 volts. So if this guy isn't moving, then you know your oxygen sensor is dead. That's a very helpful reading. And here's the other part of it. You can actually see if the oxygen sensor is reading lean or if it's reading rich. Okay, so next up we have the voltage going to the oxygen sensor heater relay. So this will tell you if the relay is giving voltage for the heater or not. That way you can see if the heater relay is bad or if the oxygen sensor is bad itself. Okay, next is closed loop. So we can see if the engine is in closed loop, if it's in open loop, or if it's in deceleration mode. Very useful. This lets you know that the engine's running properly. Next we have our throttle position sensor. So if we give it gas, goes up. And this is a bonus thing you can add if you want, which actually tells you what the ECU is reading. So we have closed, we have partial, and if I were to floor it, it would say wide open throttle. So those are different ECU modes. And actually
actually here's the, the full gauge. So you have closed throttle, part throttle, and if I were to pin it, wide open throttle. All right, next we have engine advanced or the ignition timing. So this just tells you how much advance the engine's giving. So when you go faster, usually there's more advanced. That's useful for seeing, you know, what, what your uh, ECU is letting it do. This also works in time with the uh, knock sensor, which is right here. So when you rev the engine, you should see a little bit of knock. Not a whole lot. I notice if I'm like decelerating on the highway, it can go up to 60 sometimes, but this is how if your knock sensor works or not. Next is your injector pulse width in milliseconds. So if I give it some gas, you can see it's giving it more uh, fuel. So that's useful to see how much fuel the engine's really giving it. Next is the duty cycle of the injector. This is more important for tuning, especially if you want to put different injectors in. You just want this rating to be under 80%. This is the percentage that the injector is on for the entirety of one engine cycle. So look into duty cycle if you want to check that out more. Next we have fuel sync. This is your distributor sync sensor. This tells you if it's reading one or six. So if this num if this is switching between plus and minus, then you just know that your distributor is working properly. Next we have our uh, this is our short-term fuel trim. So the engine is actively changing this so that it will uh, run. If you notice, that just dropped to zero. So that means that it couldn't pull enough fuel for it to run right. So it's probably an open loop right now. Next is long-term fuel trim. Now this is useful to see how much fuel it needs on average. So on average it needs a little more. 128 is the middle. This is for the air conditioner. So we have two readings. We have air conditioner on and off and we have request yes and no. So if we come over here and we set this to air conditioner, we get air conditioner on. So that's cool. Now right here, here's a good idea of uh, the check engine light. So the oxygen sensor has not moved. It's sitting here at a stable reading. So if the if this doesn't ever respond, your check engine light comes on. This is a fake light that I built myself, so it might be a little weird. So anyway, we have AC on or off, and we have request. So it's actually not requesting AC right now. And, all right, see, it actually just clicked over. That's pretty cool. And you, I don't know if you can hear it, but I can actually hear the um, the evaporator over there making noise. All right, so after that is some more exciting things. If you have a manual transmission, you can read gallons per hour. So this is just a calculated reading to see how much fuel you're using. But if you are an automatic guy, when we start driving, this will switch to miles per gallon. Now that's exciting. Along with that, uh, more transmission stuff. You have the mile per hour uh, from the transmission, which we can calibrate that later. So all this other stuff, you manual guys won't have. We got what gear it's in. It'll tell you the, the gear that the transmission wants to be in. And this is some other interesting stuff. So this is a bunch of on and off lights. We have the transmission side of the TPS. So I give it, give it some gas. It goes up to one. It, it's uh, steps from zero to seven. You have your power comfort switch. This guy right here. Switch it to comfort. Now it says C. Switch it back to power. We get P. We got the brake switch. So brake will show up. And then we have the solenoids. So we have solenoid one, solenoid two, and then the lockup of the torque converter. So that you can see what your transmission's doing. And then you got the time. So ain't that cool. All right, so other things. We've got AW4 screen. So basically it's just a, a layout of all the other stuff you saw before. We have a zero to 60 timer. That's pretty cool. That's not my best time, it's just a test. <laughs> Uh, we also have TCU errors. So I don't know if I can get an error to trip or not. Um, I got a solenoid override switch here, so if I flip the switch... Hey, look at that. Okay, so we got an error here. Solenoid 2 stored. And solenoid 2 current. And if we turn it off... 
then it might switch to something different, like a 4 after a little bit. I'm still trying to work on this, but it should show you what's going on with the transmission. Alright. We also have a diagnose screen, so this is really helpful. This gives you tips and stuff, and shows you all your readings and things like that. So, we have a min-max mode. You can see the minimum and maximum that the map sensor was at. We also have info. So it'll tell you what the sensor is, manifold absolute pressure sensor. It'll tell you where it's located, center of the firewall, and it'll tell you the pinouts. So you can see that A is ground, B is the output, C is 5 volts. And you can go through and check all of them out. So you got water temperature, intake, RPM, volts, TPS sensor, O2 sensor, NOx sensor, and uh, your fuel trims. And besides that, we also have tons of options. You can change your units. So we got a pressure, temperature, speed, TPS mode, ECU mode. You can change your vehicle settings like the transmission, tire size, gear ratio, speed, speed adjustment. The exciting part, the display, you can change the color to whatever you want even a custom color if you want. It's also got dimming mode, so you can have it auto dim, or you can set the uh, brightness to whatever you want. And a custom color adjuster, so you can make your own color. And then some regular settings, you got your update speed, your check engine light mode, so if it's annoying you can just turn it off if you want. Your splash screen for the startup reset if you want to reset your settings and your software info all right that's everything on the Renix engine monitor I'm trying not to make this video too long but there you go okay so on to the real question so how do you buy this thing I hand make these and they take forever it takes about an hour for every unit so I sell them in small batches when I have the chance to make them I sell them on eBay and I sell them on Etsy for $81 to $85 depending on where you buy from. I also sell custom colors and all kinds of stuff. That'll be in the ad. You can check that out. To know when the next sale goes live, please follow my YouTube, follow my Facebook, follow my Instagram, anything like that. Or I think you can follow my Etsy or my eBay stores, which are both Nick and Time Films as well. Or search them up, Renix Engine Monitor. They'll only come up when it's live though. So again, just make sure to follow one of those pages to know when one of the sales goes live. You can also order a kit from me, so if you can solder and you want to build one yourself, I sell kits at any time, so message me on Facebook for that. They are $78 for a kit, and I'm taking very limited pre-orders, so I'm only going to accept up to 10, because I, I don't want to take too many and then fall behind on stuff like that. So if you want to pre-order, if you don't think you'll be able to make a sale, that's fine too. The first version 3 sale sold 18 units in an hour and 15 minutes. <laughs> I sold out in a little over an hour. So they go quick. But I'm trying to make them as quick as possible. All right, that's it for now. Any more questions, you can ask them down below me.